Selamat pagi. Selamat sejahtera. Apa khabar? Wah, it's been about three weeks, eh? three four weeks. Uh, kita tidak bertemu. So I guess we've been very busy during the semester break to study, prepare for the test, right? So our test um, will be on the twenty uh, second. Eh? So we now uh, go into the second topic, which is on fats and oil. The technology of fats and oil, with a focus on our own uh, palm oil. Okay, we haven't started the, the, this topic yet, right? Uh, I mean, in the class, but of course we have started in, in our uh, in module. Um, so the focus will be on our palm oil. Okay, when we use the term palm oil, it refers to the oil, the oil from oil palm. So the the tree, the palm, is called oil palm. The oil that we get from the oil palm is the palm oil. So don't get don't be confused when you use this term, oil palm, palm oil. Okay. Um, may I know how many of you? Live in or near the plantation, the palm oil palm plantation. You live in or near, where? Pahang. Oh, Pahang. We have a lot of uh, oil palm plantation. Yang lain lain? I thought near in the someone said in in Modo Azura. Yeah. Uh, during my school days. Uh, I live near the plantation, but I always go into the plantation uh, to, uh, you know, work to help you know people working in the park to get some extra money. Uh, so, oil palm is something that is I'm very familiar with, yeah? and um, there's also a factory there, an oil mill. So to process the oil palm to get the oil. So it has to go through the extraction process. So the factory that do the extraction is called uh, oil mill, yeah, the mill. Then we have another factory which do the refining. So from the oil milling, from the extraction, we get the crude oil. So the crude oil, of course, uh, contain a lot of things. I hope you have watched the lectures that. Uh, I given you the links in in, in Modo, so I won't be going. I, I won't go through all those from uh, beginning. I won't be talking about the extraction part and those. Uh, I hope you can get from the online uh, uh, lectures. Yeah, then further reading. Uh, since we don't have much time, so I want to start straight away on the uh, modification of fat and oil straight into modification. The rest you can uh, look at, the, watch the online lectures that I have online. I think that is quite quite good. Yeah, give you the the essence of the extraction part. Okay. Um, so in, in Malaysia, we have two types of factory. One is the oil mill to extract the oil, and we get the crude palm oil. Then another factory is the, is, is the palm oil refinery. Yeah, the refinery. Um, I understand some of you, one or two of you, went for industrial training in the palm oil industry. Mongling. Mongling, Mongling, Mongling. Where is Mongling? <laughs> but, uh, I went to the factory that tried to uh, Is it confectionery? Uh, which factory? What factory? Kongguan. Oh, Kongguan, they use dairy creamer. Yeah. Non dairy creamer. Non dairy creamer. They use uh, uh, palm oil. They use palm oil in the form of hydrogenated palm oil. Okay. Um, do you have, do you know what the, what is the specification for the hydrogenated palm oil they use in the non dairy creamer? Do they do they reveal reveal the spec to you? Not quite sure. 
ya. Uh, so the 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 fat and oil industry in Malaysia, especially, um, they use a lot of fat products from palm from from palm oil, yeah, um, including Nestle. Nestle around the world is actually one. Um, they 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 have been the almost one of the biggest user of palm oil products. But now, because of the um, the pressure from the consumer group and from various uh, NGOs, uh, so they use they 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 use the environmental issue as one way to to um, to control the um, the production of palm oil yeah? from Malaysia and from country especially like Indonesia. Maybe you have seen uh, some one or two YouTubes about this campaign by the green uh, uh, NGOs, those who you know promote the environmental issues. Yeah? They say that our oil palm plantation uh, destroy the tropical jungle so it affects the environment, the global, uh, it contributes to the global warming and, and so on. Yeah? Um, to me, that is a, actually uh, the agenda. Uh, not so much of because concern about the environment, but the, the economic agenda by uh, developed countries to control the production of uh, palm oil. But that's my opinion. Yeah? So I've, I've given you one assignment uh, last night. Um, so maybe you uh, have a look. So that assignment is actually looking at uh, this, this issue, how the various uh, countries around the world now, especially developed countries, NGOs and consumer group, now um, have impact on the production of uh, palm oil. They try to come up with uh, a, a lot of uh, regulation to control the production of palm oil and to control uh, the, <coughs> the, the creation of new plantation, especially in Indonesia. Yeah? Malaysia used to, be, used to be the biggest palm oil producer, the biggest palm oil exporter. Yeah? But Malaysia has been very generous. We transfer our technology know-how to Indonesia. And Indonesia see palm oil as one of the, the source of revenue or income for, for the country. Because they have the same, uh, you know, the same uh, weather, the same everything with, with, with Malaysia. But they have a much, much bigger land area. So they started to plant, to, uh, to, to plant the oil palm. And now they have acquired all the technology. And now they, I think the, in terms of land, land size, the plantation, I think they, they now have a bigger uh, size, uh, bigger area, plantation area compared to Malaysia. And now they are already number one exporter and producer of palm oil. So these NGOs and uh, some uh, Western, Western countries, they said Indonesia now is destroying their jungle because they want to you know, create a new plantation. So in order to control this, they come up with a round table, uh, so-called a round table uh, sort of uh, agreement that all the producer countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Nigeria, uh, and, you know, have to abide by, by this round table uh, agreement. So I want you to read more because there is something that we need to be aware of. But this, is, this assignment um, is a simple one. I, I want you to do in groups, okay? In groups of five, choose your own members. But 
please have a good mix of girls, boys, Malay, Chinese, Indians. Yeah. Okay. So let let's make it fun, and um, rather than prepare this in in the form of normal PowerPoint presentation because we already have too much of PowerPoint. Let's give it a try using Prezi. Yeah? How many of you are familiar with Prezi? Uh, no? OK, Shen is familiar. Explore. Yeah? You just Google Prezi, go to the website. It's a web-based uh, uh, tool you can use to produce uh, a presentation, but um, it's different from what we used to with PowerPoint. Okay? So take this opportunity to learn a new tool which you can use for your presentation. I'm sure if you learn Prezi and you find it's quite, it's quite uh, interesting, maybe you can use for your final year presentation rather than using PowerPoint, at least something different. Yeah? Okay, um, now, how many of you have not watched the lectures that, uh, that I have online on, I think I have two or three of four, four, yeah, on, on this topic, on fat and oil, extraction of palm oil, uh, refining, refining part one, refining part two, uh, ah, and then the, the chemical reaction, right? The first one, the extraction of palm oil, is the most popular video I have in my channel. I have my own channel. I have about 50 videos, uh, lectures, and, and so on. So that happened to be the most popular video. I checked last night about 16, nearly 17,000 views. Yeah? And I checked, uh, from, because if you have channel on YouTube, you can check the analytics, so you can get details. Who, how many views, who viewed, which country. So I found US, actually, has the most, the viewers, uh, the large percentage of the viewers come from US. Second one, Malaysia. Next one, next uh, a few other countries, but uh, from some European countries as well. I was surprised, I was surprised because uh, I, I, I didn't expect uh, people from US are interested in palm oil, yeah? But that's um, the, 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 the fact, yeah? And uh, you know what? The video on extraction of palm oil, I get many questions. Of course, uh, not only question. Thank you, uh, uh, the, the, the what? The thank you email also from students from many universities around the world, lecturers from some uh, uh, universities from U.S. European uh, universities and, and so on. But the best thing is. I get one email from the consultant on palm oil from Vienna. You know, do you know, do you know where is Vienna? Somewhere in Europe, right? I received this email and he asked me, have you received a chocolate that I sent you recently? <laughs> At that time, I, I, didn't, I, haven't, I haven't received the chocolate. But he said, I sent you a chocolate recently because uh, to, show as a, as a, as a, uh, to show my appreciation because I found your video that one, the extraction of palm oil. I found your video and I find it very useful. And there is not much information on palm oil uh, on the internet, especially in that form. Yeah? So he was very happy, he said very useful. He used that for his consultation and now he's uh, writing a book. That was a few months ago. He's, he's writing a book and he wants to use that video as one of the reference. And uh, he was very happy, and he sent me the chocolate uh, as, a, as a show of appreciation. Yeah? And he said, I, I hope the chocolate has not melted when you receive it. <laughs> but true enough, when I receive the chocolate, it's already melted. One block like that cannot, cannot be eaten. Lah. Okay? So, um, yeah, I hope all of you have watched that, because um, then after that, you can uh, do further reading. But now, um, Shen and a few others have uh, put some discussion there about 
the trans fat. Okay. Uh, now we are talking about modification of fat and oil. Uh, I won't cover about extraction as well as refining. Everything is there. You can uh, you can watch the video and maybe you can read on your own. It's nothing much. Uh, it's not that difficult to to follow and to understand. Yeah. Okay. Once we get the oil, we can do a few things like just uh, just like starch, native starch. Native native starch has a lot of uh, um, these uh, shortcomings in the in the properties. Yeah. They cannot withstand high shear. They cannot withstand uh, low pH. They can break down easily. Similarly, fat and oil also, uh, in the original form, uh, if we want to produce different type of products from the, from the oil, we need to do some modification. For example, from the liquid oil, the, from the liquid oil that, that we use normally for cooking, right? That's the frying oil. From the liquid oil, we want to convert or transform that into something else, for example, margarine. So margarine is a solid fat. Liquid oil is a liquid, so we call it oil. Margarine is in the form of solid, so we call it fat. Okay, but basically they consist in terms of the composition, they consist the same, uh, in, uh, the same uh, triglyceride uh, composition. But one in the form of liquid oil, another is in the form of uh, solid fat. To transform from liquid oil into a solid fat, we have to increase the solid fat content of the oil. So obviously, the margarine would contain more solid fat compared to the oil. So we can measure a parameter called solid fat content, SFC, or solid fat index, which is a measure of how much fat or oil in the form of solid at any given temperature. So the margarine, for example, we can take some sample, put in, the, in an instrument, for example, in the NMR, then we can measure the solid fat content. So this is a standard test that uh, usually the fat industry will do. So at any temperature, we can get the amount of solid fat in the product. So how to turn a liquid oil into a solid fat? What's different in terms of liquid oil and a solid fat in terms of the degree of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid in the oil or in the fat? Which one contain more saturated fat or saturated fatty acid, the margarine or the liquid oil? Margarine. Okay, correct. So the more the fat contain saturated fat or saturated fatty acid, the more is the solid fat content. Okay. So um, to 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 convert unsaturated fatty acid in liquid oil into a saturated fatty acid in the margarine in the solid fat we have to carry out a process called hydrogenation. Okay, hydrogenation. Hydrogenation, if you learn in organic chemistry, if you can recall uh, what you learn in uh, organic chemistry, there are different types of uh, reaction. One is called addition, right? So we are adding two hydrogen atom at the unsaturated, at the double bond, so that it become saturated okay so it's a simple reaction we have the double bond there so in the hydrogenation process what we do we add hydrogen in the form of gas using uh, a catalyst like nickel at high temperature. So the hydrogen atom will add to the double bond 
so that the double bond will become from double bond is unsaturated, right? So from unsaturated double bond will become a saturated single bond. So we basically we transform the unsaturated fatty acid in the oil to a saturated fatty acid. So when when we increase the amount of saturated fat or saturated fatty acid, that will increase that will increase the melting point. That will increase the melting point of the fat. And that will also increase the amount of solid fat content. So in order to produce margarine and other solid fat, the hydrogenation process is one of the modification reaction, one of the modification, one of the, uh, modification uh, type that we can use to increase the solid fat content. And hydrogenation process has been very, very popular um, because relatively it's a very cheap process in terms of cost, very economical, and uh, very easy to control. Very easy to control. So if you want to increase the degree of saturated fat to a certain degree to get a certain solid fat content, so we can vary, we can change uh, the, the parameters like the temperature, we can increase the pressure and, and so on so that we can get a certain degree of hydrogenation and therefore a certain degree of saturation and solid fat content. So it has been a very popular process to modify oil or fat. To increase, solid, to increase solid fat content. But the problem, the problem with hydrogenation is it will produce a, by a side uh, reaction and produce one type of fatty acid called trans, trans fatty acid. So you know when you learn in, um, in the first year or second year, we have the cis and we have the trans. And the trans fatty acid, what's the problem with trans fatty acid? Why industry now are very concerned and the consumer now also very concerned about trans fatty acid in our food, in our fat? Hmm? Carcinogenic. What is the issue? Is it carcinogenic? Huh? What is the issue with trans fatty acid, why now it become a big issue, then the consumer are very concerned, they don't want any food contain trans fat or trans fatty acid. And because of that, the industry also now has been pressured to, to, to use fat that is trans free. Trans free, meaning free from trans fatty acid. Why? Eh, Lihun, what's the problem with trans fatty acid in, in our product in our, in our food? Increase the LDL and can lead to cardiovascular disease. Right. So in other words, it's bad for health. Yeah, okay? it's bad for health. And therefore, and there's a lot of actually scientific evidence, a lot of uh, research and scientific evidence uh, showing that trans fat really can cause, uh, you know, um, can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, you know, heart problem and, and so on. And therefore, now, the industries around, around the world who use fat who use oil in the frying oil, fat in their product, and, and so on, uh, they are now uh, looking for alternative uh, oil or fat that is free from trans fatty acid. This means the industry, the processes of fat and oil, have now to find alternative to hydrogenation. The problem with hydrogenation, if we do partial, partial hydrogenation, partial can mean 
anywhere less than 100%. If you do partial hydrogenation, then inevitably we cannot avoid some fatty, some trans fatty acid will be produced. The aim in the industry, we want to produce, uh, we, we want to, we want to uh, carry out the, hydro the hydrogenation process so that the amount of trans fatty acid cannot exceed about maybe 5 to 8 percent. More than that, then it is not acceptable. But then the normal hydrogenation process will produce more than that. But hydrogenation is very effective, economical, very cheap, easy to control. So the industry now has a challenge to find alternative process. So I saw a question in Enmodo, someone, someone asked, Farhana or who. Eh? So how do we change or what are the alternatives to hydrogenation then? Any idea now? Maybe you have read, do your own reading. What can we do now? We, we, we don't want to use hydrogenation because hydrogenation will produce trans fatty acid. But it's a cheap process, economical, easy to control, and the factory have been designed to use to do hydrogenation process. So even to change the process to something else, it must have the same criteria. It must be economical, it must be easy to control, it must produce high yield, meaning it's easy to transform from unsaturated fatty acid to saturated fatty acid. There is no, it will produce almost zero trans fatty acid. So what are the alternatives? Can we do full hydrogenation? What happens if we do full hydrogenation, 100%? all the unsaturated fatty acid is converted to 100% saturated fatty acid. So that is full hydrogenation. Do you think we will get trans fatty acid? Actually, that is one, one of the strategy we can use. If we still want to use hydrogenation, we have to do full hydrogenation. Then you will get almost nil or very little uh, uh, trans fatty acid. But if you do full hydrogenation, then you cannot have control uh, in terms of the amount of solid fat that you will get in your fat. Maybe the, 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 you want to produce fat with a certain percentage of solid fat. But if you do full hydrogenation, then maybe you you don't get, maybe you have exceeded, you will exceed that, that uh, percentage because full hydrogenation will give you all saturated fatty acid. So that's probably not a good option. That's probably not a good option. In the industry, in the industry now, we can use a, a few uh, strategies now to replace or to substitute hydrogenation. One is called interesterification. Okay? Interesterification. Or we can use fractionation, fractionation process. We can fractionate the fat into different fractions. Remember, the fat or the oil is a mixture of hundreds of different triglycerides. And each one, each triglyceride will have its own melting point. Okay? So, if we start from oil, if we start from liquid oil, and we cool the oil, we reduce the temperature, so it's a cooling process, we cool the oil from ambient temperature, or maybe from some elevated temperature, to make sure all the fat uh, has been melted first. Then we cool, we reduce the temperature. When we, reduce, when we reduce the temperature, some of the high melting point triglyceride, triglyceride will start to crystallize. Then when we reduce the temperature further, another portion, another fraction of uh, fatty acid will start to crystallize. Reduce the temperature further, 
another set, another portion of uh, triglyceride with a lower melting point will start to crystallize. So in this way, from one oil, palm oil, we can get many different fraction. Each fraction would have their own melting point. And each fraction will have their own composition of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid. Okay. Then, after that, we can blend. We can blend the different fraction to get the final product with, with the required solid fat content. So fractionation is being used widely now. Uh, in Malaysia, we have um, many uh, factories that produce fractionated fat. Yeah? The one that we use uh, in non-dairy creamer, that is one of the fraction, one of the fraction from the palm oil, which we, which we can use. Uh, it depends on what is specification. The specification usually based on the amount of saturated or unsaturated fatty acid. And we can also use the IV, the iodine, the iodine value. So the fractionated fat uh, can be specified also by their IV, iodine value. You learn in food analysis, um, iodine value is a measure of degree of unsaturation. Right. Uh, in, in IMG203, you should, have, uh, you should have learned this. Iodine value is a measure of degree of unsaturation of the fat. Okay? So the, this fractionated fat can be, uh, can be sold uh, based on their iodine value, which gives you a measure of different degree of unsaturation. Okay, um, I, have, I have shared in, on Enmodo this article uh, because I, I saw nobody actually share this. Maybe uh, you didn't discover this. This actually um, a very good article from uh, Food Technology. You know the magazine, Food Technology. The, the title is Decreasing Trans and Saturated Fatty Acid Content in Food Oil. A very, very uh, comprehensive article talk about here soybean and palm oil. This article was written by American, obviously. So they, can, they, 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 they cannot help it but to compare their own soybean and our own palm oil. Yeah? So maybe it's interesting, maybe uh, you want to read how they compare and what did they say about our palm oil. But our ah let, let 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 let's look at the middle here. Just two fats and oils, just two fat and oil dominate, and dictate oil processing worldwide. And any discuss any discussion of strategies to reduce trans and saturated fat, saturated acids in the food supply must focus on soybean and palm oil. So the production of oil, um, anything? <laughs> the production of oil, the edible oil around the world now, only focus on two main type of oil. Yeah? The soybean and palm oil. So there's still a debate. There's still a, a, a debate um, which one is better, soybean or palm oil? Of course, some of the videos that you, uh, some, some of you shared on Enmodo, those are the promotional video from our own palm oil board, palm, uh, Porim, previously Porim, now is NPOB, Malaysian Palm Oil Board. Malaysian Palm Oil Board has their own um, pro promotion uh, body. They call it Malaysian Palm Oil Council. So they are responsible to promote and, you know, 
and publicize and market our own palm oil overseas outside Malaysia. So those videos are actually from us. So of course, we will say everything good about our palm oil. But in actual fact, yes, because uh, science or science facts cannot lie. Yeah? Uh, when we compare soybean and palm oil, it's interesting, maybe you want to do more on the comparison here, because uh, later you can argue. When, the, when people ask you, which one is better, our palm oil or their soybean? Yeah? In terms of the composition of, first, when we talk about fat and oil, we always look at the composition of saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. Generally, we say saturated fatty acid is no good. Unsaturated fatty acid are good. Yeah? Palm oil contain around 50-50. Saturated and unsaturated. Soybean contains slightly more unsaturated fatty acid. So, first point, maybe our palm oil, in terms of saturated fatty acid, uh, we lose on that. Yeah? But having more saturated fatty acid has, a, has its advantage. the saturated fatty acid to something higher. But soybean, the amount of saturated fatty acid may be around what? 40%. Yeah? So you need to do more hydrogenation to increase the, 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 the solid fat, to increase the saturated fat. More hydrogenation means more trans fat. So on that count, on that point, our palm oil Win. <laughs> what else? So maybe you want to read more. Soybean versus palm oil. That would be an interesting question. Right. Soybean versus palm oil. Which one is better? Argue. Yeah? What you want to focus now is this. Uh, especially in these two oil, the trans and saturated acid, fatty acid content. Okay? And let's look at this table. Interesting. Um, I don't have time to put it in the slide, yeah? so I hope you can see clearly. Or maybe I can. Okay, can you see at the back? Maybe I can make it bigger a bit. Ah, okay. <coughs> trans and saturated acid, ah, this one is consumption, yeah? consumption. So, billion pound. So look at the soybean, these are the products from soybean. And these are the palm oil, palm kernel oil. I hope you know, you know now the difference between palm oil and palm kernel oil. Yeah? The palm kernel is from the white portion, from the kernel. The palm oil is from the, the outer portion. So you can see consumption in terms of in the United States from 2001 to 2002. There is more trans in the soybean. Right? So we look at the facts. We look at the facts. These are the facts. Because in order to produce those products like spread, spread is solid. Well, we call it solid. Lah. That's solid, plastic fat. We call it plastic fat. Yeah? So soybean need to be hydrogenated to increase the solid fat content. And there is some trans fat there. 
So this is the uh, before you know before the industry start to develop process to replace hydrogenation. But if our palm oil, there is no transfer there. Uh, cotton, uh, corn oil, cotton seed, canola oil. Canola oil now also is one of the oil that has been that is being promoted now as a healthy oil. Yeah, canola oil. So I hope um, you download this paper from Enmodo and please make your own uh, summary. Yeah? But some of the important points here, for example, here. Low trans products are arbitrarily defined as those having 5% or less. The normal hydrogen hydrogenation process produces 8% or more. So they are not acceptable to be defined under this category. The normal hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogenation process will produce 8% or higher. Even actually, uh, full hydrogenation, technically or theoretically, would not produce trans acid, trans fatty acid, 0%. But then, um, somehow, sometimes, even full hydrogenation can produce around 1% 1, 1 fatty acid. So they're still not exactly trans-free. So that's why uh, the, we have defined zero trans, not zero percent fatty acid. Uh, sorry, not zero percent trans fatty acid because it's not impossible, but very very difficult to achieve zero trans. Yeah. If they define zero trans as zero percent trans fatty acid, then it's going to be very, very difficult for the industry to achieve that limit. So when the product, even those people like Nestle and so on, you know, when they claim on the label is zero trans, <laughs> technically it still contain one to two percent. It's not really zero. But it's acceptable because the definition has been accepted. Zero trans means is is still contained between 1% or 2%. But the normal consumer, they don't know that. They just feel, oh, OK, zero trans is good. Yeah? <laughs> OK? So if we don't know, then we don't know, right? But this, uh, the role of food technologies, we have all this information to, to read. Yeah? OK. Um, This, is, uh, this table also is very interesting. Properties of partially, uh, this soybean oil, uh, partially hydrogenated. When, when we do partial, so almost guaranteed we will get trans fatty acid. Look at the original soybean. Original, before modification, before hydrogenation. That is really transfree. <laughs> yeah? But once you start to process, once you start to do the hydrogenation, you get different amount of who? That's Sorry, original soybean, hydrogenated soybean, we have about 8.7. The lowest maybe on 8% and more. Then you can get as high as 30%. Okay. Uh, and this in solid fat, you see? Uh, margarine, stearine. Sterine is a solid fraction, yeah? Very high. And you see this, the melting point is also very high. And there is a solid fat content at different temperatures. 
and that's the composition of the fatty acid. You can get a lot of, you can read this table and you can uh, try to relate the composition, the melting point, and the solid fat content. Yeah. Now, ah, this uh, now I want you to focus on this part. Strategies to reduce trans acid, trans fat or trans fatty acid. One is interesterification. Another one is fractionation. The two most uh, popular process to as an alternative to hydrogenation. Okay. And there are more references down there if you want to get more information. So I'd like to see some discussion on this article. Uh, maybe, um, well, you can summarize on, in your own words what you understand, the different approaches and strategies we can use, the industries can use to replace um, or as an alternative to hydrogenation process to produce trans-free, trans-free fatty acid. But remember, the trans-free in this, in this case is not exactly 0%. Yeah? Unless if you start from the oil, probably you can get almost nil. Trans. Uh, okay. So I think we stop here. I'll. Yeah. Pek <laughs> Hun. Yeah. Sorry again. The higher. The higher the degree of hydrogenation. Yes. Generally, yes. No, no, there, there is a, a point when we increase the degree of hydrogenation where the, tra the production of uh, trans fatty acid would actually uh, reduce substantially, significantly. Um, I think there is one slide, maybe in the next, after our test, uh, when we continue. Uh, not, not in the slide yet, uh, but I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you the trend during the hydrogenation process uh, and the relationship between the degree of hydrogenation with the production of trans fatty acid. There is a point always, actually in most chemical reaction, there is always a point where we reach, reach the maximum. Then it will start to drop significantly to almost, I mean to very, very low level. The mechanism, again, a lot, lot of research, why suddenly the trans fatty acid production is reduced when you increase the degree of saturation, when you increase the degree of hydrogenation. It's complicated. So uh, we don't, we are not interested to you know, bother about the mechanism, but as technologists, what we need to understand, when we increase the degree of hydrogenation, there is a point where it will reach the maximum, then after that, the production of trans fatty acid would reduce as we increase the degree of hydrogenation. That's why when we go towards uh, sorry, full hydrogenation, then the level of trans fatty acid production would be reduced substantially. But then, the, in terms of control of solid fat content that we want to achieve, it's, more, it's not very flexible because when you go to full hydrogenation, you cannot st stop at any point where you want to get a certain degree of solid fat. So it's not very flexible. Um, 
Okay, maybe we continue. We continue in the... <laughs>